So portrait mode. So portrait mode. Portrait mode. Portrait mode. So portrait mode is gradually becoming my favorite feature in smartphone today. It has helped me get beautiful shots and also some numbers. The guys also understand what I'm saying. But then today I'm going to talk about how portrait mode works, which phone does it best, and how to make the best out of your phone with a portrait camera. I'm Michelle Manuel, and welcome to Tech Haven. So in this video, I'll be making a lot of references to my previous video where I was talking about multiple cameras. So if you've not watched that video, I advise that you pause this, go and watch that one and come again because a lot of these videos references will be in that video. So just for your information. So what is portrait mode? In layman's terms, portrait mode is the effect you get when you shoot a picture and then the background becomes blurred. That's basically portrait mode in a layman's terms. So how does the portrait mode work? Now, a lot of phones use different methods to produce this effect. But today I'm going to be talking about how the dual camera or the phones with dual cameras do this with their two cameras. It's quite unfortunate, but then we have to go back to high school to try and explain some terms. So I want you to imagine this phenomenon. Imagine yourself being in a car traveling a long distance journey. Now imagine mountains, looking at mountains far off to one side, and then imagine trees that are being planted by the sideway, like what is being shown in the video. Now, as you are moving, you realize that even though both the mountains and the trees are stagnant, the trees seem to move past the car faster than the mountains seem to move past the car. Now, this relative motion is called parallax. Now, a lot of our physics tutors in high school made parallax look like some astrophysics, but then that is basically how parallax or what parallax is. Now imagine this second scenario. What I want you to do is that cover one of your eye and place your thumb right in front of your other eye. I'm waiting for you. I know you haven't done it yet. Yeah, but then cover one of your eye and place one thumb right in front of your eye. Now what I want you to do is that make sure your finger or your thumb is in line with something that is far away. So maybe a chair, a table, a flower pot, anything that is far off. So once they're in line, what I want you to do is that switch between the covered eyes. So switch the left eye and switch the right eye while keeping the thumb stagnant or stable, not moving the thumb. Now, as you do this, you realize that your thumb seems to be moving or changing its position. But then the object that you're referencing it to, which is in your case, maybe the table or the chair was not moving. Now, this is because of two reasons. Reason number one, your eyes are slightly apart from each other. So they, cap they both capture two different images. So from the left eye captures a particular image and from the right eye captures another image from another perspective. Now the second reason is because there's a distance or there's a gap, a significant gap between your thumb and the object that you're referencing is against. So in this case, your thumb and the table or the chair. So now this situation here is the same thing they try to apply inside cameras so now both of your eyes will serve as the two cameras inside the phone so what happens now so what your brain does is that based on your the images captured from both eyes your brain does the calculation and is able to determine that okay there's something in the foreground which is your thumb and there's something in the background now based on this principle of the two distinct images the same thing goes for the camera so when you shoot a picture in portrait mode this is what happens both cameras shoot a particular image and then they are compared so based on the shifting of the object in the foreground it is able to determine that okay this is what is the background and this is what is the foreground so then it can blur it out so in this case your thumb will be what's in the foreground and then the object that was being referenced to which is the table or the chair was the background and that will be blurred out and your thumb will be in focus so now another question may be asked why does it use the telephoto sensor to do this now if you don't understand what telephoto sensor is as i said in the beginning of the video you might have to go and refer to my other video and watch it to understand what all the different lenses mean but then why does it use a telephoto sensor in addition to the main sensor just like what is on the iphone 7 plus now i'm sure all of us have been in the situation where you have called your your girlfriend or you have called your friend 
and then your your girlfriend's face for some reason looks so weird it's disproportionate it looks get what i'm saying yeah it doesn't look like as you saw the person face to face or in most of our cases you have never been seen the girl before yes but then the reason for this is because your front facing camera is a wide angle lens now if you refer to my previous video you realize that i mentioned that wide angle lenses tend to create distortion right so take a look at this picture for instance this is the same guy the guy on the left is the same as the guy on the right but for some reason one of the guys look eh, and one of the guys looks very nice take a look at this woman too they're both the same person but one looks eh, and the other looks very nice take a look at this also one looks eh, and the other looks nice it can go on and on and on so the difference between this is that they were both taken with different lenses so one the one that seemed to be distorted was taken with a wide angle lens and the other one was taken with a zoom or telephoto lens so what wide angle lens try to do is that because they want to fit a lot of things into the frame they're trying to get wide they tend to push your ears inside and try to make your nose big like you understand so that's the distortion i'm talking about but for zoom lenses the only advantage is that you have to stand back quite a distance then you can get the image or the person's face to be in focus that is why it's quite impossible to make a front camera telephoto in order to keep the proportion accurate because if you were to take a selfie and you put your phone five meters away it's quite unrealistic right so there's a caveat with both of them so now this is the reason why when you're taking a portrait with an iphone they'll tell you move closer move closer because when you are too far away also just like your thumb it won't be able to see the difference between the foreground and the background because the the difference between the shifting of the images or both senses won't be significant so that's why i tell you move closer so you'll be able to determine what's in the background and the foreground because sometimes it's even zooming in but you realize that from your angle of view when you look inside when you're taking a portrait it looks like that zoomed in so that can keep all the proportions accurate so one may again ask how does google does do So one may again ask, how does Google do this with just one camera? Now this is quite complicated, so I'll try and break it down. So instead of using the two camera lenses or the two camera lenses, Google uses the difference between the pixels in the camera. So dual pixels. So like the eyes is at different positions, based on the difference between the pixels, it's able to determine the what's in the foreground and the background using a lot of algorithms. So this is where something we call machine learning or AI, or AI comes in. So they've taught the camera, they've trained the camera, they've trained the phone to be able to determine what should be in the foreground and the background. So when you place an image for the human being, you say, okay, this is a human being. It has two eyes, one mouth. So you'll be able to draw the outline of the human being and see what is in the background and the foreground. So that's basically how Google does it with just one lens. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed it myself. I learned a lot. So if you enjoyed this video as I did, I will treat you to share it with your friends and family. Give a like, subscribe if you haven't, and click the bell icon. So when I get a video, I release a new video, you get it in your notification feed. Once again, I'm Michelle Manuel. This is Tech Haven, and see you next time. Bye-bye.